Across the street from Lincoln Park, on Chicago's north side, stands a magnificent temple that dominates the streetscape. What appears to be a building taken directly from the streets of ancient Rome is in fact a fascinating blend of classical and American architecture and ideals. This is the Elks National Memorial and Headquarters Building. It was completed in 1926 for the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks, one of the United States' largest fraternal organizations, following the larger global phenomenon of post-World War I memorials. Its location alongside Lincoln Park is a testament to Chicago's national standing and beautification of the lakefront as part of Daniel Burnham's 1909 Plan of Chicago, an important treatise of the City Beautiful Movement. The architect, Egerton Swartwout, referred to his Beaux-Arts design as classic and more Roman than Greek, but preferred to call it modern and American. He was inspired by the adaptation of the classic that dominates the architecture of Washington, D.C., going so far as to refer to this style as our national heritage. The Elks National Memorial stands as a prime example of where the appropriation of Roman architecture can result in a building that is uniquely and wholly American. Its architectural influences are a fusion of the Pantheon in Rome, from which it borrows its saucer dome and circular shape, and the U.S. Capitol, from which it derives the encircling colonnade that runs around the entire exterior of the building. One of its most dominating exterior features is the frieze by sculptor Adolf Weinmann, entitled The Triumphs of Peace and War, The Triumphs of War Perish. The rite depicts the violence of war, with symbolic figures such as the vulture as a symbol of destruction, and the heroic figure mourning victory. The left depicts the four virtues of the elk symbolized as figures, charity, justice, brotherly love, and fidelity. The frieze borrows from classical Greek sculpture and its horizontal movement and overlapping of figures, contrasting the classical frieze as Weinman's patriotism, a sculpture on the right side of the building, loaded with American symbology. Columbia stands at the center, holding the torch of liberty, while a man on the right, draped in the stars and stripes, offers his shield and sword for the country. On the left, a mother imparts patriotism to her son, while an American eagle watches over, standing on an oak branch in a symbol of power. While Weinman's frieze evokes the splendor and beauty of classical architecture, his sculpture gives the building a uniquely American characterization. Moving into the opulent rotunda, the interior columns, coffered dome, and central oculus skylight once again show the direct influence of the Pantheon, which has the same features. Four sculptures by James Earl Fraser depict again the virtues of the Elks. Just as the building shows a Roman-American fusion, so too do Fraser's sculptures. He uses classical elements such as Charity's laurel wreath and Fidelity's sword and shield, but the sculptures share strong stylistic resemblance to Fraser's other works of American figures and explorers. In the vestibule that leads from the rotunda to the grand reception room, three murals by Edwin Blashfield that once again depict the virtues of the Elks show further classical influence. Fraternity depicts Roman fasces and the Athenian Ephibic Oath, which also embodies fidelity. In Charity, the Horn of Abundance is depicted in front of classical columns. The smallest mural depicts the figure of justice. The grand reception room, a meeting place for the president of the Elks, is equally as ornate as the main rotunda. It is especially notable for its ceiling mural by Eugene Savage depicting the feast on Mount Olympus. In another example of Roman-American fusion, classical depictions of Jupiter and Mars contrast with a depiction of Juno in a 1920s American style. The Elks National Memorial, through its abundant classical and American designs and symbology, has become the crowning jewel for the Elks organization as a physical embodiment of Elks ideals. The classical design exudes permanence, letting the memorial help the Elks uphold one of their missions. So long as there are veterans, the benevolent and protective order of Elks will never forget them. Unfortunately, it does not have the same positive reception among Chicagoans. Its connection to the City Beautiful movement was supposed to demonstrate how beautiful architecture should have a positive impact on society, and yet three years after its dedication, the Valentine's Day Massacre occurred just blocks away. In 1952, the Chicago Tribune wrote that Chicagoans have not been aware of the Elks Memorial, and in the 1980s it was more popular among local derelicts as a place for drug trafficking than as a memorial. This poor reception among Chicagoans may be because the Elks National Memorial is more of an American building than it is a Chicagoan one. Its design, purpose, and embodied principles align more coherently on a national scale. Still, by virtue of housing this nationally important building, Chicago once again distinguishes itself as a nationally important city. A poem by O. L. Hall, delivered at the dedication of the Elks National Memorial on July 14, 1926, is a testament to the building's beauty and success as a memorial. There it stands, 
It is as the Roman pantheon was when the pantheon was new, or it is Greece recreated in line as pure as ever was drawn by Athenian architect to adorn the high Acropolis. This is a jewel of peace, bought with the blood of heroes. The calm magnificence of its shining front betokens the fraternity that has everlasting hatred of war. So lovely a thing it is that I may not rest upon it to be reminded of strife, but only of beauty.